Hello, and welcome to the Fighting Moose Podcast. I'm your host and narrator, Jason Hendrickson. This is a podcast where I retell stories, some fictional and some historical, that can be enjoyed by people of all ages. Last night, John was laying in bed, and he said to me, Dad, you know what you haven't done in a while for the podcast? I said, what haven't I done? He said, A Thornton W. Burgess story. I did have to agree with that. It has been a while. Though I am sad to report, today we will not be doing a story from Mr. Burgess. We will be doing a story from Mr. James Baldwin, which we have read a few of his stories in the past. So I'm sorry, John, but next episode I will do one from Mr. Burgess for you. So like I said, today we read two stories from Mr. James Baldwin. The first story being Saving the Birds, and the second being Another Bird Story. And these stories come from the book 50 Famous People, written by James Baldwin. I guess this is kind of a double feature today, since we talk about two different people. But when looking at how the book was formatted online it made it look like a story with two parts. So I don't know, I'll leave it up to you to decide. We will say it's a double feature because for me, I like double features. Now, let's turn to today's stories. I hope you enjoy, let's begin. Saving the Birds One day in spring, four men were riding on horseback along a country road. These men were lawyers, and they were going to the next town to attend court. There had been a rain, and the ground was very soft. Water was dripping from the trees, and the grass was wet. The four lawyers rode along, one behind another, for the pathway was narrow and the mud on each side of it was deep. They rode slowly and talked and laughed and were very jolly. As they were passing through a grove of small trees, they heard a great fluttering over their heads and a feeble chirping in the grass by the roadside. Stith, stith, stith came from the leafy branches above them. Cheep, cheep, cheep came from the wet grass. "'What is the matter here?' asked the first lawyer, whose name was Speed. "'Oh, it's only some old robins,' said the second lawyer, whose name was Hardin. "'The storm has blown two of the little ones out of the nest. "'They are too young to fly, and the mother bird is making a great fuss about it. "'What a pity!' They'll die down there in the grass, said the third lawyer, whose name I forget. Oh well, they're nothing but birds, said Mr. Hardin. Why should we bother? Yes, why should we, said Mr. Speed. The three men, as they passed, looked down and saw the little birds fluttering in the cold, wet grass. They saw the mother robin flying about and crying to her mate. Then they rode on, talking and laughing as before. In a few minutes, they had forgotten about the birds. But the fourth lawyer, whose name was Abraham Lincoln, stopped. He got down from his horse and very gently took the little ones up in his big, warm hands. They did not seem frightened, but chirped softly as if they knew they were safe. Never mind, my little fellows, said Mr. Lincoln. I will put you in your own cozy little bed. Then he looked up to find the nest from which they had fallen. 
It was high, much higher than he could reach. But Mr. Lincoln could climb. He had climbed many a tree when he was a boy. He put the birds softly, one by one, into their warm little home. Two other baby birds were there. They had not fallen out. All cuddled down together and were very happy. Soon, the three lawyers who had ridden ahead stopped at a spring to give their horses water. Where is Lincoln? asked one. All were surprised to find that he was not with them. Do you remember those birds? said Mr. Speed. Very likely he has stopped to take care of them. In a few minutes, Mr. Lincoln joined them. His shoes were covered with mud. He had torn his coat on the thorny tree. Hello, Abraham, said Mr. Hardin. Where have you been? I stopped a minute to give those birds to their mother, he answered. Well, we always thought you were a hero, said Mr. Speed. Now we know it. Then all three of them laughed heartily. They thought it so foolish that a strong man should take so much trouble just for some worthless young birds. Gentlemen, said Mr. Lincoln, I could not have slept tonight if I had left those helpless little robins to perish in the wet grass. Abraham Lincoln afterwards became very famous as a lawyer and statesman. He was elected president. Next to Washington, he was the greatest American. Another Bird Story A great battle had begun. Cannon were booming, some far away, some near at hand. Soldiers were marching through the fields. Men on horseback were riding in haste toward the front. Whiz! A cannonball struck the ground quite near to a company of soldiers. But they marched straight onward. The drums were beating. The fifes were playing. Whiz! Another cannonball flew through the air and struck a tree nearby. A brave general was riding across the field. One ball after another came whizzing near him. General, you are in danger here, said an officer who was riding with him. You had better fall back to a place of safety. But the general rode on. Suddenly, he stopped at the foot of a tree. Halt, he cried to the men who were with him. He leaped from his horse. He stooped and picked up a bird's nest that had fallen upon the ground. In the nest were some tiny, half-fledged birds. Their mouths were open for the food they were expecting their mother to give them. I cannot think of leaving these little things here to be trampled upon, said the general. He lifted the nest gently and put it in a safe place in the forks of the tree. Whiz! Another cannonball. He leaped into the saddle, and away he dashed, with his officers close behind him. Whiz! 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 He had done one good deed. He would do many more before the war was over. Boom! 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 The cannon were roaring, the balls were flying, the battle was raging. But amid all the turmoil and danger, the little birds chirped happily in the safe shelter where the great general, Robert E. Lee, had placed them. He prayeth best who loveth best, all things both great and small, for the dear God who loveth us has made and loveth all.
Thank you for listening to this episode of the Fighting Moose Podcast. Please join us next time as we read another exciting story. Today's music was provided by the artist Analog by Nature, and the audio clips were provided from NASA. For more information to download and or listen to audio or materials from all our recordings, or to contact us, please visit www.thefightingmoose.com, or you can follow the links in the show notes. If you enjoy the podcast, please leave us a review wherever you get your podcast or on iTunes and tell a friend. Thank you for your patronage, and as always, try and do a random act of kindness every day. Missing complete Houston. After uh, serving the world for over 30 years, the space shuttle turned its place in history. And it's come to a final stop.